Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. This is our New Year's Eve edition. So um, we're doing, uh, as I traditionally do, sparkling wines. Now, we have three wines from different parts of the world. Well, two from France, so but different parts of France. And um, so, I, you know, Total Wine is where I went to get everything for the Christmas, except for that Oloroso. And for the New Year's wine, made it real simple, went there. And I just kind of went to the sparkling wine section, the champagne section, just kind of randomly picked some stuff for the most part. So, um, you know, New Year's Eve, sparkling wine seems to be, you know, what everyone wants to do. You don't have to do sparkling wine just for celebrations. You can do it for, um, you can do it for other types of just regular old drinking and, and pairing, pairing with foods. But, you know, kind of what we traditionally want to do, we use bubbly to celebrate things. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with celebrating with bubbly. So um, I thought I'd get three different wines here, um, and uh, we'll go through them. Uh, so real quick, oh, not real quick, but let's get right into the very first one. So this is the Gruet uh, Brut Non-Vintage, bam, bought it at Total Wine. It lists for $12.99, got it for $11.69 on their six-pack discount program. About six wines, got a discount on it. So... Um, we're gonna do a little rinse first, because that was the remnants of that Oloroso. A nice little rinse out of that. And then we're going to pour some more into here. Yes, I know. It's here for a prop. All right, and uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna put that off to the side. We'll leave that alone. So again, uh, sparkling wine, no reason you cannot drink sparkling wine out of a regular wine glass. Maybe use a more traditional white wine glass rather than a red wine glass, but nothing wrong with using a traditional glass. It allows you to really get the bouquet going or the aromas, uh, whereas this, yes, it, it can concentrate, but you can't swirl it or anything. It's just, it's there for the bubbles, that's it. Gruet, so let's go through who they are real quick. Um, so, uh, they're actually a French family, um, that, uh, made champagne in France. Um, the founder Gilbert Gray was founder of Gray Winery. He was born in Bethon, France in 1931. Um, he began working, um, or 1952, he, along with his wife, Danielle, dreamt of producing fine quality champagne. So he followed his heart and in 1967 created the Union Vincole de Cotu de Bethon. So a co-op in the village of Bethon. And in 83, uh, the family was traveling through southwestern part of the United States and met uh, and went to New Mexico. And they met a group of European winemakers that successfully planted vineyards in Ingle, a town near Truth, Truth or Consequences, which is 170 miles south of Albuquerque. Uh, so <laughs> middle of nowhere, right? Um, it was, land was really cheap. And uh, so they decided to buy some. In 1984, um, Gilbert Gruet, whose champagne house, Gruet et Fili, or I'm sorry, Gruet et Fils, or Fils, I don't know, Gruet and Brothers, uh, had produced fine champagne in Bethon, France since 1952, made the decision to plant an experimental vineyard uh with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. His children, winemaker Laurent and daughter uh, Natalie, then relocated to the great state of New Mexico to begin their American winemaking adventure. Uh, their vineyard's at about 4,300 feet. So what that does is, while it gets hot in New Mexico, uh, you get this huge diurnal shift, about 30 degrees, so that tell, it says that they it helps prolong the uh, growing season, which in New Mexico, if you're at a lower level, would be very short like Texas. 
So it allows to allows them to um, slow down the maturation process. Um, let's see. That's really, I mean, well, it says in 87, they had a, the excellent 1987 harvest allowed them to produce the first two wines following strict guidelines of a true uh, traditional method, method champenois, uh, the Gret Brut non-vintage, which is this, and the Gret, uh, the Gruet, I'm sorry, Gruet, Gruet Blanc de Blanc, de, I'm sorry, Gruet Brut Blanc de Noir non-vintage. Uh, they made 5,000 bottles. All manual machinery had been shipped from France, and the wine was produced in a small rented facility in the city of Albuquerque. That's where they make the wine. They're, they're based in Albuquerque. Uh, in 1889, after the required minimum uh, of two years aging on tirage, uh, our first two sparkling wines are introduced to a very appreciative world. Blah, 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 blah. So, and they make a bunch of, and then they have a whole line of sparkling wines. They make a regular Chardonnay and a regular Pinot Noir. So, uh, it's probably the only wine from New Mexico that anyone's ever heard of. Uh, I'll just be honest. Um, I've heard good things about the Gruet. I've never had one that I can remember. So this is kind of, this is real exciting to try one of these. Um, so let's get right into it. The bubbles are really getting into the nose there. Somewhat bakery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really swirl this and dump it out again. Oops, got some onto the thing there. Only because I was getting a little nuttiness, which is not unusual in sparkling wine at all. But I really wanna make sure I'm not getting the remnants of the Oloroso. No, a little bit of nuttiness, so that's good. Not much else, though. More of an almond type of thing. <clears throat> thing about having sparkling wine, you start Swirl your mouth, get some more bubbles. You're kind of like, like that. Dry as it should because it's brute. Um, yeah, some nuttiness, some almond flavor, not a whole lot. It's not really overpowering. It's a very slight, um, it's kind of a bitterness to it, a little bit of tartness to it. Um, you know, medium plus, at least on the acid, a uh, good bubble, good mouthfeel. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's brute wine, so it's not supposed to be like this. You know, it's not, it's not going to have this this uh, apparent sweetness to it, um, but it's really light. It's good. You can tell I'm not like enthusiastic about it. <clears throat> but if you if you stuck this in front of me at a New Year's Eve party or just at your house said, "Hey, have some sparkling wine from New Mexico," or even tell me what it was, I'd be like, "This is good. Can I have some more?" Yeah, it's really very, very light hint of almond to it. Um, but there's, a, there's a slight bitterness to it. I think that's probably why it's turning me off because I get that bitter, a little bit of bitter flavor to it. But 
like I said, if you gave this to me and said, here, have some sparkling wine, I would probably, I wouldn't turn it down. It's still pretty darn good. I think what it was is <clears throat> there's been a lot of hype about the winery. I think I was expecting a little bit more. And now I have to go, no, it's, this is, and this is their entry level, non-vintage brute. It's not going to be an epiphany. Maybe one of their vintage uh, offerings might be a little bit more like, wow, this is awesome. But this is good. I mean, it's, what did I, call, what did I say? It was like uh, 12 bucks, 13 bucks. It's not expensive. It's $13 a bottle of wine, sparkling wine. It's pretty good. Really reasonable. I mean, if you pay twenty five for it, I might be like, well, I don't know about twenty five dollars, but it's pretty good. It's not bad. Good. All right, so let's move on to wine number two. Now, wine number two, this is going to be real interesting. Let's just get into what the wine is first. This is the uh, Depreville Demi Sec. Method traditional, so the normal champagne method where second fermentation happens in the bottle. <clears throat> and um, I paid, a total wine, I paid, well, lists for $16.99, I paid $15.29. Now, I bought this because I wanted something demi-sec. Always having brute or extra brute, uh, sparkling wines and I wanted to have something that had a little bit of sweetness to it. So I really wanted to try that. So I pretty much just kind of picked up the first bottle that said Demi Sec that was not too expensive. And I mean, it was pretty good presentation, this nice white bottle and all that. Get it home, no big deal. Throw in the fridge, pull it out, decide to do some research on it. And it goes, I see Dem Depreville Demi Sec Ice. Drink on ice. I'm like, what? So I decided, well, let me go look it up. Well, here's, I'll try to give you the short version. It was really hard to find anything about this one. Matter of fact, Depreville really doesn't exist as a winery. It kind of does, but not really. Um, it's kind of one of those Total Wine house brands. Um, and apparently uh, the, the importer, um, Serenity Imports, Imports a lot of wine for Total Wine. Matter of fact, one of the wines from last episode was imported by them for sure because I just, as I was doing the review, I, oh, I saw it. I don't know about the other ones. Um, so they make a lot of, um, they do a lot of uh, uh, business with that importer. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so it took a long time to figure out who these guys were. So when you look it up, and you're looking up the importer, for some reason you get the Deutsch family wine and spirits. I don't know why. I couldn't figure out why that came up, but it did. And then I then, it, then I did more digging and I got to a, a lawsuit with Moet and the company that's on the back, which is the, let me sure I do the right company first. There's two companies involved here. Uh, Le Maison du Vignon, uh, that is the company that's listed on the back. Do a little more digging, you get that it's actually the Les Grands Chez de France, okay? So that's who you get with that. And it's basically a trademark infringement. I guess they said that um, Moet came up with an ice champagne and they were infringing upon that and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And so it was filed in New York. I won't go through that any more of that. Get rid of that one. So then we get, um, so then you do some more digging and then I got into this thing called Francois Montan. Ice. Now, I remember seeing the Francois Montan uh, label at Total Wine. And then you can do more digging, and uh, then you get to Les Maisons du Vignon, which you're like, okay, I found them, and they're part of a big company uh, called GFC Planet. They have a bunch of different uh, uh, French companies. And then I looked them up. That was the French version of the site. So um, real interesting Really hard to find out anything about this, but figured out it's basically, and I'm pretty sure about this, because when you go to the Francois Montan site and you look up their ice wine, guess what? It looks just like this bottle. So Francois Montan is the maker of this wine. I'm going to say it right then and there. Um, so all those like 
peeling back the onions and I really hate that. Just freaking tell me who made the stupid wine, okay? So that's my soapbox. I was really frustrated trying to find out. Just felt like I was being deceived as to who made it. Is this a brand they stuck on there? Maybe it's not as good as the Francois Malton ice version, but um, uh, we'll say, we'll, we'll, and so anyway, so out, out, out of all that, this is from the Jura uh, part of, of France, almost said Spain. Uh, that is the southeastern-ish, really kind of central eastern part of France near uh, near the Swiss Alps. Uh, they make a whole bunch of other wines, but they do make some sparkling wines. So this is where this has come from. Um, I won't go through the whole history. Just They've been making wine since um, the 1940s. And they have a brand called uh, Francois Montan Ice. And if I remember to get a screenshot of it, it looks exactly like this bottle. Almost exactly like this bottle. I mean, it's like the white... <coughs> the white bottle and the little thing. But anyway, <coughs> so let's get into the wine itself. And I got off my soapbox and who these guys were. Let's check it out. Demi Sec. All right, a little bit fruity on the nose. Like, uh, Not bubble gum, but like a cherry. Almost cotton candy. Like reddish fruit, pink fruit. You know, a nice, nice little nose. I don't get much else other than that on the nose. A nice little style. Again, you got a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of sugar. Really nice. I mean, I really can see just sipping on this. It's it's like when you have a Moscato, okay? You get a light Moscato, has a little bit of sweetness, not too sugary sweet. Similar to that. It's really it's very tasty. And sugar, of course, is very seductive. It makes wines, all wines taste good, no matter how good quality it is. And I'm not saying they use sugar to hide quality, but... Because even within sweet wines, you can you can still tell quality. And with that said, on the palate, it's so it's sweet. Maybe like an apricot type of sweet. So remember I was saying on the nose, I got this like cotton candy or watermelon, almost watermelon, I think really on the nose. But, and when I met my pink fruit, it's like did that kind of candy, pink candy type of stuff. Um, bubble gum. On the palate, it's not so much like that. It's a little bit more <clears throat> um, apricot. With like sugar on it, you know, like sugarified apricot, like like uh, preserve. It's tasty. It really is. So, now I got the glass with ice in it. Ice didn't melt too much. And they really say, put a couple couple cubes of ice in there and serve it in a glass like this. So there's a Francois Montan, and I'm assuming the Moet says to do the same thing. I don't think the ice necessarily uh, changes it dramatically off of the first sip, but what it will do is help keep it really ice cold. So, mm. 
Mm-hmm. It really keeps it super crisp. But I feel like it's it's diminishing the uh, the flavors, which that happens when you keep things really ice cold. <laughs> oh. This is what I get for not taking my allergy shots a couple weeks ago and being a little more regular on it. The allergies are really killing me. Anyway, um, I, mean, I can still smell and all that, but it feels stuffed up. It's not bad. I mean, it's, what, how much was this again? 16 bucks? $17. So <clears throat> it's a little bit sweet. It's not sugary sweet. It's not over, over the top sweet. Just demi-sec, half dry. So, I mean, not bad. Not bad at all. Now let's move on to the last wine. All right. This is the 2004 Bernard Bremont Champagne. So from Champagne, uh, vintage Champagne. Uh, they are a grower producer, or you know, known as a grower Champagne. So they they. They own the entire process. They own the vineyards. They, you know, they, they personally make the wine. They have total control. It's like, you know, being a regular winemaker. They, you don't contract out your, your vineyards. So I want to get in grow. I want to do grower champagne. I wanted vintage champagne to finish off the episode. And uh, real quick, the uh, wine spectator rated the vintage as a whole of champagne as a 92. So this should be a pretty darn good, pretty darn good uh, representation of champagne. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So who are, who are these guys? So uh, you have, <clears throat> I, I, the site's in French, so I have Google Translate translating for us. So it says, are Michel Bernard and parents create their explo exploitation? Champagne Bernard Bremont in 1965 in Abonnet, a small village, uh, a small village Champagne Grand Cru 100%. So real, real quick, you have, you have different levels of crews in Champagne, and then you have percentages associated with it. So the best you could get for a, a village rating or, or vineyard rating is 100%. So these are the best of the best of the best of the best grapes that are made. The difference between these guys and say a larger house like a Moet is that they own everything. They, it's not, you know, they, they're called a uh, Recultant Manipulant, okay, RM. And you'll see, I, I always talk about how you can never find it, but, I, I, but it's on here. Now, where was it on here? There's an RM on the label. Trust me, it's on there. I forgot. I could... I can't really see with the lighting in here, but it's on there. Um, so I was looking for that. I want to make sure I saw it on the label. Man, I'm really kind of mad I can't see it now. Oh, hello. It's not the initials. It actually says it. Actually says it right underneath the name of the... Well, I can't really see it from there. But right underneath the name of the, uh, of the champagne house. Now, sometimes it just says RM. And it might be... I've heard it sometimes it's up here, but it's somewhere on the label... You'll have that on there. Um, they have 12 hectares of Pinot Black, Pinot Noir, and three hectares of Chardonnay. And um, let's see, their vines are an average age of 30 years, planted on clay and limestone. And their 98% of the vineyards are located in the town of Abonnet, and the other 2% in the territory of Boozy. Um, and those towns are are classified as Grand Cru, 100%. And let's see, there's only 17, only 17 municipalities can have the Grand Cru, 100%. And uh, of those 17, Abonnet and Boozy are part of that. That was kind of a a uh, what should I call it? A, a, a translation of a translation. Now, it says their Champagne Brut Grand Cru. Um, this is where it gets a little confusing for me because I'm not really sure. A uh, uh, blend of 80% Pinot Noir, 20% Chardonnay. But then it says our vintages 
in special bottle, always from a great year. So I'm assuming that their, their line, they have vintage versions of their line. Um, selected from harvest among our best exposed plots uh, is composed of 55% Pinot Noir and 45% Chardonnay. So I don't know which version to look at for this, but it's vintage, vintage brute. Let's put it that way. And it has Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Oh, how much did I pay for it? Total wine paid, uh, listed at $59.99 and I paid $53.99. So most expensive wine of the trip to Total Wine and of the two episodes. Lots of almonds on the nose. <clears throat> like almond cookie, almond pastry. Really nice nose. On the palate, the almond flavor really continues to come through. Uh, good acid, dry, of course. Um, I would call it a medium acid, though. It's not really, really heavily acidic. A really smooth wine. I mean, there's a there's a marked difference between that wine and the other two. In mouthfeel, how it how it how it just feels, how it just it coats the mouth. It's, I mean, granted, this is demi sex, so it's a little bit different, but it feels like you can feel there's a there's a higher quality to this wine. It's good. Yeah, sixty dollars. It should be pretty freaking good for sixty bucks, um, but you will not go wrong with this wine. You, I, I personally would say you don't want this at your New Year's Eve party at the house. Okay, the quality of the wine is going to get lost on your guests. If you're having a small gathering type of thing, not, not like a raucous house party, or you want to do something that's from something special. Um, with a couple people, that's something you would do. Uh, these are definitely more for the New Year's Eve. I'm having a party at the house instead of going out to the club or going out to the hotel and spending tons of money. We're gonna, you know, buy reasonably priced, uh, pretty good champagnes or, or sparkling wines. These are for that. This is for the. This is for your serious. Again, you're not gonna have 50 people over your house and, and popping bottles of this. They're not gonna. They're not going to appreciate what it is. It kind of reminds me of the nuttiness of that Oloroso. I mean, granted, it's, it's a different, different, totally different, but I can see having almond cookies with this. Okay? That type of that type of food with it. Besides, you know, you could have all kinds of like cheeses and nuts, salads. <clears throat> but if you had a cheese and nut tray with this, perfect. Absolutely perfect. It, it, hard cheeses. I think it would be great. Absolutely great. Um, I'm really excited about drinking the rest of this bottle um, over the next couple days. I mean, I've got to put the little thing on there and get it all cold. Uh, speaking of that, you can't see it, but over there, I've got my new 36 bottle wine refrigerator. I'm super psyched about having a way to temperaturally control my wines. Um, I mean, now that I'm starting to get, buy some more expensive wines and uh, not drink them immediately, I want to be able to <clears throat> be able to control the temperature. I actually have 36 bottles of wine to put in there. So I'm already at capacity on that. But a lot of it was the wines, like 12 of those are the wines, or 11 are the wines that I bought in Napa, Napa in Arizona. So um, those are wines I'm going to eventually, uh, gonna eventually um, get through. I've got 12 bottles from uh, Wall Street Journal Wine Club. Decided to, to, to plop down the money for that, check it out. 
some duplicates in the wine, but all those wines are going to be review wines. Plus, I have other wines to review. Uh, so I've got a lot of stuff to review over the next over the next uh, few months or a few weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's try that wine in the ice. Now that the ice is melted, it's a little more, maybe it's warmed up a little bit. It's also more diluted. It's pleasant, you know, but you can tell it's been watered down a little bit, but it's pleasant. I don't see the point in putting ice on it or serving it on ice. Yeah, it is raining outside. You probably can't hear it. Um, I don't see the reason why I'd put ice on it or put ice in it, but I know people that like putting ice in their white wine. So anyway, um, find this wine, the uh, Bernard Bramont, or this, or if you can find the actual, you know, the the uh, Francois Merton or whatever it is, uh, the Gruet. <clears throat> Again, a good solid bottle of Brut that's not too terribly expensive, you know, the under $15 range. Um, good stuff. All these wines are great. I uh, really want to thank everybody for watching over this past year. Uh, and of course, all the years prior. Uh, it's been great. We still have a couple more uh, Napa Valley um, and the Arizona uh, winery interview to go. Uh, ooh, lightning. Anyway, uh, so you got that. And then uh, possibly doing a product review. I won't say who it is yet. Um, I can tell you so I'm... I, I'm a, if they agree to what I want to do, uh, there'll be an experimentation on it to kind of see, kind of see, it's kind of prove it does what it does. Um, but it's kind of catching the buzz right now out there with the wine stuff. Let's see what else. It's been a great year. It's been an awesome year for me personally and professionally. I'm in, I'm in a position where I actually can be a psalm now, um, and I'm still learning quite a bit. It's still not 100% comfortable being on the floor as a psalm, which you might find surprising. Um, but being able to utilize my knowledge is, is, is better than where I was before. Nothing wrong with the last company I worked at. It was great. If I wasn't into wine, I would have stayed with them. Uh, and there's the same parent company, so I'm still within the same family. Uh, but personally, it's been a great year. Um, had some amazing experiences uh, in the wine world and personally. And I'm looking forward to next year. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers that I get to go to the course for the advanced sommelier exam. Uh, if not, <clears throat> I'll just do the course and the exam in the same year, the following year, because I wasn't going to take the exam to 2016 anyway. Um, but I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, the sommelier, San Antonio Sommelier Association, uh, started off really gangbusters, kind of dipped a little bit. Uh, we've had an officer meeting today and we really went through a lot of stuff that we need to do to uh, make things better. So if you are in the San Antonio area, feel free to email me, mark at San, <laughs> mark at San, I'm sorry, no, it's Mark V. Fusco. <laughs> or is it Mark? I don't even remember. I think mark at 1337 Wine works just fine. Um, I think it's Mark, yeah, Mark V. Fusco at San Antonio Sommelier Association org. It's easier to type mark at 1337wine.com if you're interested in finding out more about the society or the society association. And um, that's going to do it. I hope all of you had a great, great uh, 2014. I hope you all have a great 2015. Be safe out there New Year's Eve. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll be pouring you a bottle of wine at work. And um, we will, oh, friend me up above. Hit the PayPal button over there to send me some ducats. Links below for all the stuff. I'm not sure how much I'm going to put up there on this wine. Maybe I'll put all my research up. I'm not really sure. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.